everybody, my name is John Sieberth with Wool Car Nissan and welcome to another episode of Roadside Reviews, number four to be exact, and it is gonna be a great one because behind me we have the all new 2021, completely redesigned, top of the line Nissan Rogue. Now let's go a little bit into the history of the Rogue. Back in 2007 was first introduced when the new Sentra was also redesigned and it was the first segment into the smaller mid-size crossover SUV and Nissan's never looked back. This is gonna be the third generation of the Nissan Rogue and still remains one of the best sellers out there in the current market. And when you think about the amount of engineering, cost, R&D, everything that goes into it, how long it took to be able to produce this car, I mean, just look at it. They have done a phenomenal job. This looks like it's light years ahead of everything else out on the market. Even when you're taking a look at the front end, it's got a very masculine, strong front end. Everything from the V-Motion grille, you can see it's got that nice design that tapers down, follows through with the design at the top headlights and turn signals, which are all LEDs now. Everything into the honeycomb grille, your large Nissan badging, your flat black and then chrome on the bottom of the bumper. Everything was designed for a purpose, but really stands out as far as the styling of the vehicle. Now with this Nissan Rogue being the Platinum, you got all the extra you know, goodies to go along with it. So all your daytime running lights, turn signals, and headlights are gonna be all full LEDs along with your fog lamps. And even though you see some things on here that may look cool, they also have, also have functionality as well. So everything from your side air dams to be able to help improve aerodynamics and cooling of the engine and transmission, just down to the complete design. Everything from seeing that your radar cruise control is now built into your front emblem, giving it a nice seamless design, along with one of your cameras for the 360 degree cam uh, backup camera that goes along with it. Front parking sensors have been neatly integrated into the front bumper and fascias, and also added them over onto the side to be able to give you a wider area. So when you're using your camera and the parking sensors, you can be able to see actually what's on the side of you. So you can be able to pick that up with better maneuverability as well. But the biggest thing I can't be able to get, stress enough is just the overall design, how well that they did this car. Everything's clean, everything's put together in the right spot. This is just my opinion, but there's not a lot I would want to be able to change about this vehicle. Now, let's go ahead and dive underneath the hood because they've done a lot of work underneath there as well. So underneath the hood, you're going to see something a little bit familiar, which is the 2.5 liter inline four cylinder engine that Nissan's used on a lot of their Rogues and other cars in their Nissan lineup. Now it's got some new special tweaks to it. This engine now produces 181 horsepower and 181 foot-pounds of torque, which is an improvement from previous models. Now that engine is also tied to the CVT transmission, which is gonna be something Nissan is very well known for. Continuous variable transmission. There's no gears in it. So what that's gonna do is give you a very smooth, streamlined acceleration while driving the vehicle. But since you're not tied to any select gear ratio, it can be able to maximize engine performance when you need acceleration, but also be able to use a lower gear ratio to be able to improve fuel economy. That's gonna give this a whopping 28 miles per gallon combined city and freeway. So it's like hybrid range fuel mileage without actually having to go to a hybrid. And you can be able to see just like on a lot of the other Nissan vehicles, the layout is super simple. Engine oil dipstick, so you can be able to check that. Engine coolant, brake fluid, easy to be able to get to the battery. So if you're just a little bit more of a novice and you're checking your car before you go on a road trip, you can be able to make sure that everything is on level to where it needs to be. So nothing super complicated, very nice and neat, not a lot of extras and add-ons, all about simplicity. But I can't really be able to stress how much power that this engine makes and how efficiently it's distributed through the CVT transmission. Now you do also have the option of going with a front wheel drive like this or the all wheel drive model. You usually see that a lot more up in you know, the snowier climates where you need a little bit of traction, but that is also an available option to be able to get for the powertrain on the road. Now, closing this, like we talked about, your turn signals up on the top follow that nice V-motion grille, but that same body line goes all the way down falling through to the end of the SUV. Your wheel arches, nice, round, obviously, and you do also have the black trim that continue with the front of the bumper, which goes all the way the length to the rear of the vehicle. And then getting into your 18 inch wheels and tires. Now this Nissan Rogue is gonna come with Dunlop tires on an 18 inch wheel. It is an aluminum alloy wheel with the machine finish with a darker finish on the inlay, which is really gonna be able to add nicely with the matte black finish and also the gray color of this vehicle. 
Ride quality is going to be phenomenal. Having an 18 inch wheel and tire, you still have a lot of sidewall to be able to give you good drivability, whether you're going on long road trips or going over a bumpy road, but still be able to give you enough traction if you're going down to the beach or going down a hiking trail and need to be able to get off the road a little bit. So you're not compromising ride quality and drivability for off-road ruggedness. So it's going to be able to tackle just about anything you could be able to throw at it. Coming over here to the mirrors, integrated turn signals. See that a lot in the newer models that we have out here. Another camera located right here for your 360 degree uh, backup camera. Now these are also gonna be folding mirrors too. So in the event that someone's going by or you're in a tight spot, that mirror folds very close up into the car, maximize the amount of space. But also if somebody hits it, it's gonna minimize damage to the camera and the mirror itself. Now they do fold forwards as well. So it doesn't matter which way the person's going in HEB or the car is driving. If someone knocks it either direction, it can be able to make sure that it follows that. Coming down over on this side, you can see that you have the paint to match door handles. Starting up on the top two, the same matte finish that we saw in the front of the vehicle for your roof rails, adding a nice aesthetic touch, but it is also functional. So if you get the crossbars that go uh, across the side of the vehicle, put everything from bike racks, kayak racks, luggage racks, whatever you want. So there is still the SUV aspect of that you can be able to do things with this. It's just not all for looks, it is also functional. Coming back over here to the rear, you can see how that body line that started in the front transitions all the way over into the back. And then the same setup, chrome Nissan badging, Nissan Rogue, your platinum badging right there so everybody knows what trim level you have. Everything from the way that the taillights follow that line and then mold into the rear of the vehicle. Just really, really well done. I can't really stress that enough. You do also have a rear backup camera located right here above the rear license plate, giving you max amount of visibility along with rear parking sensors. Like we talked about in the front, you have your four facing ones in the rear, but also two off to the side, so it's gonna be able to give you more coverage. So not only do you have the visual point of it with the camera to see where you're going, but now you have an audible uh, way to be able to differentiate about how close you're getting to objects as well. So two different redundant systems. Coming into the back, you do have a power lift gate, which is motion activated, so you can get your hands full as long as you have the key in your pocket, you can be able to come up kick your foot underneath the door, and then be able to have it automatically uh, power open. So as you saw before, there is one way to be able to open up the lift gate, which is the button down here, but now this does have the motion activated lift gate. So like we talked about before, your hands are full of groceries, you're holding a child, whatever it may be. All the key has to do is be within range of the vehicle, kick your foot in once, and then back. Now your lift gate is open. Great feature to be able to have, especially like I said, if you have your hands full, shopping carts are full, you've got the whole tribe of kids behind you, just makes life a little bit easier. Into the back, tons of storage space. If you run out of space over uh, for a trip or you know for a weekend, you've got too much stuff to be able to pack. Let's put it that way. Lots of storage space back here. You do also have your uh, manual seat releases located on both sides. So if you need a little bit more access, you don't have to be able to go to the second row to be able to fold those down just by simply holding the handle. We'll be able to create a full flat surface up to the two front seats but then the storage configuration you have back here. You do also have two trays that sit underneath, so if there's things like a first aid kit, a roadside kit, or just things you want out of sight from people, you can be able to hide them up underneath there, but they also stand up and can be a divider, so if you don't want things rolling around, you got a jug of milk and some orange juice, and you don't want that running over the bread and the eggs from the grocery store, you can be able to separate those to make sure that no valuables or fragiles would be damaged at that point as well. Now, since this is a family-oriented SUV, you can be able to see that you have your rear anchors for child safety seats for all three positions in the back. So if you have a front-facing, all three spots, rear-facing for the two outboards, which would make it a lot easier to be able to get the smaller kids in and out. Now, you have your motion-activated kick, like we just showed, how to be able to press the button up into the front, and then also onto the rear liftgate. By pressing this button, it'll just close it. By pressing the lock button, It'll close and then automatically lock the vehicle and set the security system as well. So one touch to be able to do that. See it close, vehicle's locked, alarm is set, you just simply walk away. Now a cool safety feature with these, you see on a lot of SUVs, but Nissan kind of took it to the next level, is the pressure switches be able to keep you from losing a finger or you know coming out into a wall. If there's pressure applied to the outside of the tailgate while it's opening, it's gonna go ahead and reverse its trajectory. I believe it's a couple pounds. So if you're too close to a wall or a car or even a person, it'll go ahead and reverse its trajectory. 
kind of hard to be able to see, but you have a little weather strip that runs all the way up from the very bottom of the tailgate up to the top. And inside here is a sensor. So once it feels detection on it, it'll automatically reverse its trajectory to keep from any people, you know, getting crushed fingers. And I'll go ahead and show you that right now. We close the lift gate. No pressure, no pressure. Just by a simple touch. Once again, safety features. And like I said, no one wants to be able to get a smashed finger and that's what's gonna help prevent that, especially if you have smaller kids. They don't really know any better. They have their hand right here. You're closing it, you're walking away. Saves you a trip to the hospital or to the urgent care clinic. Very, very cool, very intuitive. Tons of ways to be able to open it up. It's really gonna change the way that you think about how to operate a car and how simple it's gonna make your life. Now, if we come over this direction, you'll see on the driver's side, looks a lot like the passenger side, you do also have your Nissan Intelligent key, which is gonna give you the remote keyless entry, like on this one, your lock, unlock, your button to be able to open up your rear tailgate. So that's the fourth one, panic button, and then also a engine start. Now, if you saw our Titan video, you no, know, we went over pretty well in depth of how that works, but just simply lock your vehicle, hit the lock button twice, press and hold the start button, voila. Now, this has a pretty good range. I think it's like close to 80 meters away. So if you're inside your house, your office building, you can be able to start the vehicle. It has temperature sensors on the outside of the car and inside of the car that can be able to measure ambient temperatures on both sides. So if it's 110 degrees outside, it's 140 degrees inside your car, you don't wanna hop into that. By simply starting that, the automatic climate control will be able to detect it, cranks on the AC and gets all the hot air out while chilling as much air as possible. So by the time you get into your car, you're in a cooled vehicle. Now it also works in the winter time, all one and a half months we have down here in South Texas, right? So if it's 40 degrees outside and it's 50 degrees inside your vehicle, you don't really wanna hop into that as well. So during the winter time, it'll go ahead push all the cold air out, crank the heater on, and be able to get it as close to 80 degrees as possible. So by the time you get into your car, it's nice and warm as well. You can be able to extend this because right now the way it sits, it'll run for 10 minutes and then turn itself off. So it's kind of one of those set it and forget it things. So if you're not leaving the office, you get called into a meeting, or you're just not ready to leave work yet, the car won't just keep running. It'll turn itself off. Now you can extend it by just simply pressing the lock button once and the self-start button once and it'll go for another 10 minutes. So you can get a total of 20 minutes of runtime. If you do that halfway through the first cycle, then you get 15 minutes of runtime. Now you decide that you're not gonna wanna leave the house or the office, simply hit the self-start button one more time, vehicle turns off. The big thing to be able to mention with that is while the vehicle's running, all the same security systems are still in place. Doors are locked, vehicle mobilizer system is going. You cannot be able to get in and start and drive this vehicle without this key. So even if somebody were to go through a window to try to get into it, the second they hit the brake button to be able to shift out of gear, the car is gonna go ahead and kill itself. Very cool feature to be able to have. With that, you do have the proximity sensors on the two front doors, but with the newer Rogue, you have them also on the rear. Remember, these are selective. So if you go up just to one door, you can see the vehicle is locked, keys in my pocket, within about arm's reach of the door, hit this one button once, just this door unlocks. The selective part is nice because if you're just getting to the driver's side or one of the back doors, nobody else can be able to enter in from the other side. Same way to be able to lock it, hear it beep twice, door locks, vehicle security system's going. Hit it twice in a row, now all your doors are unlocked. Look at this interior. There's not another Nissan out there that looks as good as this. I mean, I know we have the Murano and the Pathfinder and the Titans. They all have their specific look, but you know, this, they've, Nissan, once again, has really outdone themselves, you know, how everything is laid out. And you can see that it's more driver oriented, which is gonna go with the Nissan theme of having a sportier feel. Everything's kind of slightly tilted to the driver. So it's almost like you're in a cockpit of an airplane. Everything's very easy to be able to see and be able to get to, but just even the ergonomics of it, just everything, looks like it's in the right place and everything is just done very, very well. You now, in starting over here, you have all your safety features such as your lane keep assist and of course your heads up display controls right here by the uh, left driver knee. And then also your power rear lift gate. So not only can you be able to open it from inside the vehicle, but then also close it too. So if you're doing kind of like the touchless uh, grocery pickup curbside, all you have to be able to do is press the button, open it up. Once everything's loaded back up, you can be able to close it as well so no one's touching your vehicle really cool feature to be able to have. 
The biggest thing with this Platinum that you're gonna notice right off the bat is your two screens. You have a nine inch touch screen over here with the new set for your radio, similar to some of the newer Nissan models, but it's gonna be your gauge cluster up front. A 12 inch fully digital display. So there's no analog gauges whatsoever on this. Now you're gonna have your typical ones such as your engine RPMs over here, your speedometers on the right hand side, your engine temperature, your coolant temperature, and then your fuel gauge right over here. Time and temperature on the outside are located right there up at the top. This vehicle has a whopping 72 miles on it where your odometer's at, then also your distance still empty, 183 miles so far. But everything, it just looks so clean and you're not hunting to be able to find anything on here. Now you do have a slew of different menus you can be able to use in this screen, but also customization as well. So by flipping through all of your different warnings and displays, you can be able to see everything from vehicle direction, what radio station you're listening to from right there. You can also be able to use this switch right here to be able to toggle down through your submenus if there are any. Your driver computer, so to be able to tell you your average fuel mileage, consumption, miles per hour, how long you've been driving while still maintaining everything else out onto the screen. Tire pressure monitoring system, so it'll actually give you a digital readout of every tire. So once you start moving the vehicle, it's not just gonna tell you you have a low tire. It'll tell you, okay, this tire is low and you have 28 PSI, it's time to be able to fill up. Now these are gonna be more for your driving age, which is going to display everything from your blind spot warning, to your lane assist, to vehicles that are in front of you when you're using your radar cruise control, or the 360 safety shield as well. Once you get to your warning screen, this is gonna be one letting you know, do you have a door open? Are you low on fuel? Is it time for maintenance? Anything that the driver needs to be aware about before you start driving is gonna come up on this screen as well. You can be able to see we got a door open, obviously we're filming, but if there's any other issues with the vehicle, it's gonna pop up right in the center with this orange explanation point. So it grabs your attention before you start going. But once again, everything is just so nicely clean, laid out, it's not cluttered. It's very sharp and clear. I don't think the camera's gonna do justice of how well this display really works. And of course, you got windshield wipers, turn signals, automatic headlamps. Once again, they don't extend out past the steering wheel, so you don't have to worry about bumping them and causing a distraction if you're trying to pull into a parking spot. Everything from your stereo controls to Bluetooth controls and uh, radar cruise control located right here on the steering wheel, so it keeps your hands on the wheel, eyes on the road, safest way to be able to drive. But even the ergonomics of the steering wheel, you got this nice, thick, leather-wrapped steering wheel that also does have the flat bottom. Not only to be able to give that real good sporty look to it, but if you're a bigger guy like me and you need a little bit more space down here on the bottom, it's not going to be able to cut into the uh, leg space that you would need down there. Now, this steering wheel is a tilt, but also telescopic. The telescop telescopic feature is great because you want to position yourself where you feel safe with the pedals of the vehicle, right? So if you're a little bit of a shorter person, you don't want to be sitting right on top of the airbag to be able to reach the pedals. So you can be able to push the steering wheel in. A little bit taller like myself, being six foot three, I can be able to pull the steering wheel out to where I feel comfortable. So lots of variations and different spots to be able to place it depending on the size of the driver as well. Now, you do have the CVT transmission and we talked about there's no gears in it, but it does simulate an automatic transmission and you do have a manual shift mode as well. So you can be able to control the manual shift mode from right here or by these paddle shifters. It's really gonna give you a more hands-on interactive feel. So if you're going through the hill country, down some winding roads, up and down hills, you can be able to control which gear is selected and then how long it's gonna be able to keep it in there. Really adding to that interactive sporty feel that Nissan's known for. Now getting over here to your display, I have my cell phone hooked up to it right now and this is the Apple CarPlay. So very seamless integration into it. So everything from maps, music, or any other apps that you would be using. Also letting you know when you get your text messages, but then you can be able to use the Siri hands-free. So by simply pressing and holding the talk button, you can be able to give Siri commands like to be able to play a certain song or send a text message to you know mom or dad, or even be able to put in a destination for the map, all while driving and keeping your hands on the wheel. So no more fidgeting and going over to that as well. Now, with the Nissans, you do also have your main menu. So we have your Apple CarPlay plugged in right there. You can go through your information screen. Now this does have the XM nav traffic, radio, sports and weather. Stock markets, you wanna check and see where they're at from there. You can be able to see fuel prices, who's got the best fuel price if it's time to be able to pull over or get low on gas. 
even be able to check movie theater listings. Everything's going to be through here through your uh, command settings and then everything else that you're at. If you're lost and you need to be able to find a spot and tell somebody where you're at, it'll actually give you your actual GPS coordinates. So if you're out in the middle of Arizona trying to be able to find out where the flying saucers landed and you broke down, there you are. You know exactly where you're at. Getting back over here to your menu, all your audio controls, and which radio stations you're listening to, be able to change your sources and all your presets that you have. Bluetooth audio, so you don't need to be able to have a cord to be able to plug in your phone or MP3 device to be able to stream from there. Now you do also have two different USBs. You have your traditional USB located right here, but then also your USB-C. So if you have a newer smartphone, you can be able to use that to be able to uh, charge your phone, but then also it's a little bit quicker as far as charging and transmitting data as well. Newer features want to be able to integrate both of those depending on what sort of cord that you have. Now, down here for your climate controls, very simple. You have driver and passenger dual zone automatic climate control. These two vents will be for the driver. The passenger two side vents will be controlled off of this knob right here. So if the driver wants it on low, but the passenger wants it at 73, it's going to automatically, when put on auto, select where the air is going and the speed to be able to make sure that both of these areas are covered correctly. Now, if you want to change it back just to one, just hit your sync button again, and it goes all the way back to whatever the driver has there set on. Not a lot of push buttons. Everything is nice and analog, very easy to be able to find. Everything from your temperature for the rear, which we'll go over in a second, fan speed, your defrosters, and whether you want fresh air coming in or recirculating. Now up here too, you can be able to see that you have your three level heated seats for the front driver and passenger. South Texas, why do I need heated seats? Well, like we talked about before, you get about a month and a half of cold weather, and yes, it is a nice thing to be able to have because you don't want to be touching cold leather while you're getting into your vehicle, right? So. You have that for the winter time, or let's just say that you just played a round of golf or you know, went out axle with your buddies or spent a day at the lake and you're kind of sore, you're tired. Nothing's better than getting into your car and be able to turn on a warming seat to be able to help relax muscles. Or just like you know, you just got out of the gym and got a little bit of a drive home, you want to be able to relax yourself. Trust me, it works wonders. Now, you don't just have heated seats, you also have a heated steering wheel as well. So, don't want to be grabbing a cold one during the winter time. And they heat up really, really quick, which is nice. The heating elements in here have a full range, so it's just not one warm spot, it's the entire steering wheel that will then be heated. Getting down to the other parts, you do have a 12 volt plug-in located right there, so if you want an extra USB or have something that runs off a 12 volt, you also have the flexibility. And then your push button for the ignition has been located right down here at to the bottom. Cup holders, you have two of them right here, and also a little bit of removable tray, so if you spill anything, very easy to be able to clean up, but then also adds a little bit of depth into the bottom. And you have these little spacers right here on the side, so no matter what size cup it is, it's going to be able to hold on to it so it's not going to be sloshing around, keeping it in place. Now the new big feature for the Rogue 2 is going to be the shifter for the CVT transmission. It's all electronic now, so no mechanical linkage to it. Kind of similar to our Nissan Lease, if you've seen those before, in the sense where you have your park button, so once you get to your destination, by simply hitting park, it puts the vehicle into park. Now you want to go into reverse. You just can't push the button up or down to be able to do so. There's a button onto the side. Push that, hold it forward. Vehicle is now in reverse. Pull it back one spot. And now you're into drive. And then you can be able to switch into your manual mode from there. Push it forward one more. Now you're into neutral. Why would you need neutral? Let's just say that you're going through one of those automated car washes where the roller chain's pulling you through, you need to keep your vehicle in neutral, that's how you would set it. And then once you need to stop, simply hitting park, vehicle goes in from there. Very nice, something that you'd see on like a $100,000 Mercedes or BMW. You know, a lot of car manufacturers have gone to this but really haven't used it because of the cost standpoint, but Nissan really didn't spare uh, anything when creating this new SUV, the new Rogue, because they wanted to be able to really make a statement out there for vehicles in this class of what they're gonna have to keep up with. You do have an electric parking brake. Simply pulling that up automatically engages it. Pushing it down will automatically disengage it. Once the vehicle's turned off, this will automatically turn on and once you put the vehicle into drive, it will release itself. An auto hold button. If you're on a hill and you take your foot off the brake, you don't want the vehicle rolling back, it'll hold the brakes on for a couple seconds until you hit the gas release so you don't have to worry about that roll back or pulling out into a busy inter intersection. 
And then the drive modes. This being the front wheel drive, you have three different drive modes. You have a normal, a sport, and also an eco. If you have the all-wheel drive mode, you have a snow mode, and then also an off-road mode. And that's going to be able to really change which wheel is getting power and very low traction if you're in mud or sand or anything like that. But being the front wheel drive, it's something that they really didn't incorporate because you're not going to be using that a whole lot. Now when you start the vehicle, it's going to automatically be in standard mode. And that's everything that's going to run off to make it a very comfortable ride. Everything from the way that the transmission reacts, steering wheel feels, how acceleration handles, just making it a nice, luxurious, smooth ride, but also really trying to give you the best fuel economy. Putting it into sport changes everything. Your throttle sensitivity is changed up. The transmission is going to shift more like an automatic transmission, like a sport. So shifts are going to be very firm, very tight. As you're going to see, it's going to hold the RPMs a little bit longer so you get a little bit better response. And then you have Eco. You want a hyper mile. You're going on a longer road trip or just cruising around downtown. It's going to numb down the throttle sensitivity a little bit. It's also going to, very minutely to a point where you can't be able to tell, adjust your air conditioning because you don't want that drawing off of the engine as well. And then the steering and the brakes. So it's going to use all those things in conjunction to be able to help get you the best gas mileage possible. And once again, with the new technologies they put into this car, it's hard to be able to feel it, but then knowing that it's working because you can see a result directly off of the fuel mileage that you're going to get. Like I said again, 28, 29 miles per gallon combined between city and freeway. That's hybrid car fuel mileage and a vehicle that doesn't have all the batteries and hybrid technology into it. So that is a huge leap forward for the Nissan brand, especially with protect, protecting Mother Earth as well. So moving further back into the center console, we have kind of an homage to when the uh, Murano came out, which was our first luxury crossover SUV, and then going to the butterfly style center console opening very deep, tons of space inside of here too. It actually has a built-in cell phone holder, anything that you could think that you want to keep in the center console, you can have down inside there. This is nice because you can be able to open up one side or the other, but instead of having one that flips up, it still keeps everything out. You don't have to block off anything from the front or have to be able to lift something up all the way up with one arm to be able to look down into it. Simply opens up from there, but like I said, the nice part is either one side can be open or both or closing at the same time. So that's going to be a new feature for the Rogue. Like I said, kind of pays heritage to the Nissan brand and like I said, where all these crossover SUVs started, which was the Nissan Murano, which is going to be our flagship crossover SUV. But I can tell you right now, this is really giving the Murano a run for its money with all the technologies that you get. And one other thing too I wanted to be able to point out and talk about these vehicles is things that you don't see. When we talk about there are years and years and millions and millions of dollars worth of engineering that goes into making these cars. This was something that was probably on the drawing board five, six years ago. And then they start doing engineering for aerodynamics, fuel efficiency, safety, making sure all the looks of what the designers want, working with what the engineers can do to keep this vehicle safe and fuel efficient. But Nissan really excels in the point where they're going to put a lot of sound deadening material, things that you don't see that are going to really add to this ride of the car. So by adding a lot of that material in the doors, your roofs, and even the floorboards, it's going to give you a very, very quiet ride. Something you wouldn't see or you can't see by just looking at the vehicle, but you can be able to tell while driving it. So having a very smooth, a very, very quiet ride. Because the last thing you want to be doing is driving down the interstate and constantly hearing the hum of the tires you know, hitting potholes and things squeaking and rattling. All that sound deadening material that's put into the vehicle that you can't see is what's going to be able to lead to a very quiet ride, a very comfortable ride, and reducing driver fatigue over longer trips as well. Then being the Platinum model, one other great feature that you get is going to be the panoramic sunroof. And all your controls for that are going to be located right here. You have two of them. One is going to be for the shade. So if you just want to have it open like a tr traditional sunroof, slides back halfway gives you your little bit of view, which is nice. Now let's say that everybody wants to have a look at it. Press the button one more time. You can see how far it retracts, making sure that everybody in the vehicle gets a view. Then one touch sliding roof, which in other vehicles you can see that they go up and over the sunroof, which you know is the design, you know, it works, it doesn't. This one goes right underneath it, which I think is going to give it a much cleaner look, especially from the outside. Now you do have a wind dampener up here, so even with the sunroof open, you can carry a conversation inside the car, be able to speak on Bluetooth without having any wind noise or disruption inside the vehicle. And then closing, it's going to be just as simple. So simply one touch there, 
closes the sunroof. One touch will then bring it back up to its halfway position. And it is a pretty speedy shade too, so it's no slouch. You're not having to sit here to wait forever in a day to be able to use it. And one more then to be able to close it up. But even for vehicles in this size, the, the actual size of the panoramic, panoramic roof is going to be one of the larger ones out on the market too. And now, let's go take a look at the rear. Alright. Wow. Space back here is not a premium or luxury. It is just standard when it comes to this vehicle. As I said, I'm six foot three, 260 ish pounds. I fit very comfortably back here. Lots of headroom, lots of legroom. The same seat materials, that perforated leather in the front continues into the rear with that quilting pattern. Very supportive seats. I mean, it's just a much larger cabin than what you would think. So four guys the size of me could fit back here very, very comfortably. And then all the luxury and fun options, they don't stop just with the driver and front passenger. They also go back to the rear. Big thing to be able to point out is privacy. Let's say that you're going down the road or you just want a little bit darker here. On this Platinum model, you do have sunscreens that come up from the doors that work onto both sides. Adding that little bit of you know, privacy to it, blocking out a little bit more sun if you know you're getting it on you know in the morning commute or you know just going back home or keeping that VIP in the back and you don't want people taking a whole bunch of pictures and you want to feel important, you can be able to have them up. Same soft touch materials that you had in the two front doors follow through to the rear with the French stitching along the side. Having that white nice stitching is a good contrast between this two-tone interior because you can tell this is going to be the black leather with almost like this camel brown up on top really kind of breaks it up a little bit, but works very, very well with each other. You do have a independent third climate control into the rear. So remember, front driver and passenger have their own temperatures they can be able to set. Same thing with the rear. Now you can be able to sync that or control it up from the front to where you can be able to keep that. So if you have kids back here and they can't adjust it or you know kids don't know best parents do, you can be able to control the temperature. Or us adults can be able to raise or lower the temperature coming out of these AC vents in the rear. Now you do have another USB plug and USB-C located in the rear, so everybody can plug in their electronic devices. And think about it this way, you got a newer iPad. Kids want to be distracted. You don't want to have to worry about the battery dying. Having two USB plugs means you can have two electronic devices plugged in so they can still watch the movies or play their games, keeping them nice and quiet into the rear. And being the Platinum, you do also have rear outboarded heated seats. So just like with the same way in the front, dual level, they're adjustable, especially during the winter time, everyone stays nice and warm. Now, center console wise, folds down, which like a lot of the Nissans, large center console sits right above the seat. So if you have a laptop or a briefcase or anything underneath, it's not gonna be resting right on top of it with two cup holders right here. But then also you do have storage for cup holders right in each of the rear doors as well. Like I said, I can't stress, just as comfortable as the driver's seat is, this rear seat is. And it is also reclinable too, so you can actually be able to lay these back about an inch. So if you're on a longer road trip, you just want to get a little bit more comfortable. If you're sitting back here on a laptop computer and you're doing work and you just want to lean back a little bit, you have the ability to do so as well. Now they're not power folding, they are manual, but very simple and easy to be able to do. But just wow, they've done so well with this. Now we talked briefly about the child safety seats, the rear anchors located in the rear and then also you do have your front acres your anchors right here in the front for both the outside outboard seats so if you have a front facing child safety seat not only can you be able to use the rear tether anchor but also the anchors into that so if you have smaller kids you're starting up a family very very safe vehicle has all the amenities that you want to be able to have into it to make sure that you know everyone is buckled in and as safe as can be but then not only is it about passenger space but the car seats as well car seats take up a lot of space right so you're not having to worry about having to keep this front seat all the way forward to be able to keep that child safety seat from hitting the rear and then the front person doesn't have the leg room the amount of room that it has in the back that you can put a full-size child safety seat back here and have the seat all the way to the rear so if i'm sitting in one of the front seats i don't have to worry about losing my leg room because of that now guys i could go on for hours and be able to tell you everything else that's new with this vehicle but the best way to be able to experience it is in person so you want to be able to schedule a test drive come on out take a look at it give it a drive for yourself to be able to see all those features we talked about and more 
Now Nissan's vowed for the next 10 years, they're gonna go across their whole model line, be able to changing everything up as far as safety features, technology, fuel efficiency, and capabilities. And this one's gonna be leading the pack. Now make sure if you like the video to give it a thumbs up. Make sure if you're not subscribed already, be able to hit that subscribe button and also the bell so we have new videos coming out every week so that you're notified for that. My name's John Siebers here with Wool Car Nissan. This was Roadside Reviews Episode 4. We look forward to seeing you soon.